All right, I wanted to share my first tips and tricks video for my steel string singer number uh, two. This is number two. Um, <laughs> remember the last video? I'm going to kind of recap some things that I've been using a lot during building this one out. And so the step bit, absolutely essential. This is not what I mentioned before, but I think you're going to want it. This actually came from Radio Shack. Uh, there's a ton of alternatives on Amazon. I'm going to send you know the link in the description. But more or less, it's like a dentist tool. Back when Radio Shack was open, I got a you know this little thing that came with my uh, soldering station that I bought from them back in the day, and I use this dentist pick so much just to form leads, to move things around ever so slightly. Uh, you're gonna want one of these for sure. All right, and so why I mentioned the step bit is when I was designing this chassis, I really wanted it to be Amp Builder's choice on some things. One of those things is with the jacks coming in and out, uh, will those be isolated or not? Isolated meaning isolated from the chassis, the grounding, uh, basically. Some Amp Builders don't really mind having, especially the, the FX loop, isolated uh, same with the input jacks I prefer having both the input jacks and the FX loop isolated from the chassis which means that you need to run your ground to a ground point um, you know a, a ground washer somewhere inside so the first thing that I did was grab this step bit which goes up to a half inch drill through one two three four on the, on the two in the front and um, add the isolation washers that you can buy you'll, you'll just look for isolation washers for switch craft jacks <clears throat> and they're little shoulders so on the other side there's an equivalent pair basically you need two per jack and you will need long bushing jacks so I went with Switchcraft brand. I really like the Switchcraft brand, even with the um, the FET input up here. That you need the long bushing. That you'll see that there's not much thread left even after I'm used the long bushing, just because of how thick. That's one eighth inch, you know, aluminum. So that's my little tip there. One other thing. So as far as the build sequence. You're going to see a, that I made a lot of progress, but I'm going to walk you through sort of my approach on this one. The first thing I did, and I mentioned in the other video, was drill the mounting holes. So before I populated this board, I drilled mounting. I laid it flat, and I found a couple strategic opportunities to drill the mounting holes, um, and I did that right away. Uh, so So... Basically, the, the board was flush. I took my drill. I drilled straight down, and then I populated these standoffs. I'm just – these standoffs are sort of – they're not permanently installed. They're dry fit. I'm going to just keep going back and forth. Uh, the second thing I did was I cut this little notch. So when I was designing this chassis, I thought over and over, and even the boards, you know, what could go wrong, and how can I mitigate that? And so far, any uh, sort of thing that got in the way, I was able to overcome pretty easily without just, you know, any sort of compromise <clears throat> to this project. So one of the things is I moved these resistors back a little bit. And, and uh, so I can have an opportunity to cut the little corner out here. And it's not in its full position. I think in its full position, let me line it up to the mounts. It's like this. So when you put the jack in, it used to get very close, like uncomfortably close to that corner. So I cut, notched out that side, that, as you see here, using a fine tooth uh, saw. And just, it's good to go. So there's no compromise there. The second, you know, sort of, not second thing, I've kind of gone through a few second things. But the next thing I did was populate the boards. So one of the things that I found on Hoffman site when I was buying the the boards was this really nice 20 gauge alpha wire solid core and I bought way too much of it wire and I'm going and I use that 
for all the runs. So obviously there's a few things that need to be clipped um, and such, but basically that wire is really good. So you, so you so you cut to length, you pull up through the eyelet, and then you bend over uh, to the sides, sort of like this, you'll see. And that holds that line in place. Sometimes you might want to grab some super glue. I use Gorilla Glue, super glue uh, gel, just to hold the wire in place. You can also use hot glue. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, hot glue kind of sets faster and keeps you going. Or you could just time it right so you can use the super glue and walk away for a bit and grab a coffee or whatever it is. Grab a coffee, grab a beer. Probably a coffee is better because... Hot soldering iron and alcohol, probably. It could be a little dicey. Um, all right, so yeah, I, I populated all these things. Uh, you might notice in my bomb, it's mostly complete. This is new old stock. I have a bunch of these lying around uh, that, I, that I acquired. There's a couple other new old stock stuff. So my bomb is mostly complete. You're going to definitely want to double check. And plus, if you're an amp builder or have experience, you might have a component or two that you prefer uh, versus what I've picked out. But you should get the general idea on my approach. And my approach, and it doesn't, it's not 100% always, you know, standard or how Dumble did it. But I really like having um, these Dale metal resistors everywhere except for in the uh, signal path like the actual signal dropping and such. So you'll notice that I use them a lot because they're not in the signal path. They're, these are dropping resistors for the plates. Um, you know, that's going to ground. Anywhere that you see going to ground, there's one of those Dale resistors like that one right there, just because it's really low noise and a small, compact sort of approach. These... My um, caps, these are BC caps. They're new old stock as well from right around 2002. Um, yeah, so I had a, uh, acquired a few of those. These right here are extremely long life, solid electrolytic capacitors. So your normal electrolytics have liquid in them. And that's why it's sort of, I'm on the fence about, I was on the fence about using them. But I use the capacitance meter, and I also have a ESR meter, which I highly recommend. So if you're going to dabble into uh, capacitors or you want to double check the values before you put them in, um, you know, and buy a bunch of extra ones, I'm going to put these two in my link because I rely on these heavily, and they're not that expensive. You could probably get a hundred dollars, and you'll get them both. So I highly recommend those because um, I checked every single capacitor and went that approach. These are 230 volts, so they're low ESR. Um, that, there's like a little bit of a proportion between voltage rating and uh, ESR. Um, the proportion is basically the higher the voltage, and this is general, uh, the higher the voltage, the lower the ESR. So I think these were around 3 ohms, but I may be wrong. Um, here's the coveted sort of some people say it's secret. Some people say it doesn't matter at all. But there are... Triad is making a few of these, and I've only found them on, I think, masterelectronics.com. So I ordered a bunch, and I advised anyone that pre-ordered, or not really pre-ordered because I didn't collect money, but anyone that was interested in my design, in my amp, before I started actually producing the chassis, I encourage everyone to go out and get these before... Triad doesn't make them ever again, which was the case. I think it was it was quite a few years, at least 10, 15 years that they stopped making these. So it is the same exact one that was used on Dumble. Check out the run the, the original Steel String Singer number two. Um, yeah. So preamp wiring. After you populate the board, you probably want to do the heater wiring. And this is how I've kind of laid out my heater wiring. And because, again, it's, I can't really fly it, so it needs to be sort of low profile. I came down. This is 18-gauge military grade. I think I got these from AmplifiedParts.com. If you go on my GitHub bomb, you're going to see this wire. I ordered way too much of it. 
again, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I tucked it in in the corner over here. And this is sort of my approach to that. I'm going to fly on these, uh, on the power tubes. I'm going to fly over the top. So anything, I'm just going to basically jump around and go in here. So that's the next thing I did. And that's where I sort of ended today. I'm a little bit in reverse order. But I'm going to help you through my mistakes. You know, those two don't mind. doesn't matter. So doing this uh, front panel and the heater wire doesn't make it too big of a difference. So this is my preamp wiring um, or the front panel wiring. You're going to see new old stock stuff here and there. But I believe I compensated for that in the bomb just because I measured even all the new old stock stuff I had. Uh, I measured it to make sure it was within the spec, and that one was, so I kept it. Um, you're going to notice that uh, some of the components look a little different. This is a, uh, a ceramic cap, sort of best practice to use there. And here's my, and here's my wiring. I had a bunch of silver tinned some folks like silver tinned wire this this is amazing this is actually from tube depot it's silver 20 gauge uh, i use this on my john mayer build but because it's so low capacitance um it will maintain your high-end frequency uh and this amp is known to be pretty bright so you're going to notice that i didn't use it in my preamp wiring up here just so you know, it would smooth out that top end, even if there is a lot of top end. I'm sort of taking an ed educated guess on this, just be uh, from what I've heard from other builders that this is a bright amp, and anything to do to smooth out the topness, um, I'm going to do. All right, step filters. You'll see that this is the low step filter. This is my approach. It sort of looks like the picture, the gut shot of Dumble's steel string singer number two. Um, what I've done, you'll notice that the standoff is really inconvenient and I can only do one thing at a time. So what I'm going to, what I did was, uh, I built the high step filter first. So you'll notice that this 270 K ohm resistor is going to hook up in the end right there and everything's going to fall in place nicely. That's going to be after I drop the preamp board and drop, uh, and you know, tie it down. But this is my approach to the, and I'll get some good lighting here for this one, for the high filter. Um, you'll notice that Dumble had the orange drop in the middle. And that didn't make any sense on the Japanese schematic on why it was in the middle. Um, I think after building this, Dumble didn't connect it to the middle terminal, which was the middle step filter setting. I think he did what I did because I had to try it to learn. Um, see how the lead drops down and goes all the way to the right, the, the, the connection that actually makes sense? I think that's what he did. If you look at it straight on, it looks symmetrical, right? So you have three uh, mica caps on each side, and then you have the orange drop in the middle. Now, after looking at the picture again, I built my <clears throat> steel string singer number four, to have this sort of step filter arrangement. And so what I did was I maintained the, you know, basically the setting. Uh, so I can do a one-to-one -one comparison between the two amps at the end. So, but if you look at the schemat, uh, the actual gut shot of steel string singer number two, you're gonna see these bigger capacitors on the left and the smaller capacitors on the right. So I think that for the high filter, at least, the original was reversed. So it looked like this versus looking like this. Um, so I'm going to connect that pretty much last. You're going to see these wires. They're going to connect to the preamp. I'm going to have to do some sort of finagling there. All right, and here's sort of a, a dry fit of everything. I don't have standoffs on a couple of these boards. Um, but this is sort of what I'm looking at as we get closer to completion. 
The transformers are coming in soon, so I'll be able to wire that up, and then I'll get the the wiring for uh, the outlet good and good to go. Um, you'll notice that I thought through having these really long um, uh, fuses to to straddle between two power fuses or the power tubes. Uh, the bias jacks I'm sort of I put in place. It's going to be really tight here, so I adjusted my design and my preamp of the uh, the phase driver board um, with a cathode uh, follower tube also. So it had enough room to stick up the way it does. Uh, here's my ground that I can use for uh, ground access and doing just really quick. You know, sometimes some folks don't even trust having the the one ohm dropping resistor uh just to just to do the voltage divide um to to basically measure milliamps to millivolts but it would it, you know for on the road or at a friend's house if you're gigging that would that's kind of convenient just to be able to take a multimeter and meter while the amp is still on stamp amp is still running you don't have to get a oven mitt to pull the power tubes to measure the current uh using a current meter but that's it uh, the F and T caps are all the rage nowadays for their low ESR, high qualityness. So that was sort of essential. And plus, I had a really hard time fitting my. I had a hard time fitting my um, new old stock Adams. Uh, if you look, basically they're the size of that board. Um, these are also old. Again, I have my meters. To help me uh, see if these are still good or not but I had a bunch of these and I'm just not gonna use them for this build because I wanted it to be consistent I want this thing to sound the best that it could be and also if you were to repair you know this amp today the real number two uh, what would you use maybe you would use the original probably but I want to kind of make a improved more modern design in some aspects that don't, you know, equate to tone. So my approach is to drop the noise floor and maintain sort of the uh, spirit of number two. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I think that might finish it for the video. Uh, one of the cool things I'm really excited for is I also drilled, sorry for my messy bench, uh, this is in my bomb, this is the light, that I'm going to use, it's two uh, well, it's, yeah, it's 120 and 240 compatible, it's LED. The one thing I'm not quite thrilled about, and I never, you know, about LED is that they, it does have a flicker, that 60 hertz sort of flicker. Um, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Maybe I can t uh, rectify, and just get a DC signal in there, or maybe I'll just live with it for a bit. Uh, you'll notice, because I'm such a nice dude, uh, that the this vertical support is gone out of mine. There was a little bit of an incident with the, um, well, basically when it was tacked in place, it wasn't correct. So this is the one chassis out of all of them that didn't have it correct. And that's okay because, you know, the uh, chassis maker was, I'm sure would be fine with replacing that. Uh, the problem was I already powder coated this. So I broke the beads and I'm going to reinstall that vertical support at another time <clears throat> and more towards the end of the build. So I'm, again, not dead in the water, and that's good. So, yeah, here we go. Um, this is a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I did have a friend, Bamba, reach out and tell me a little bit more about how the foot pedal is connected, and I'll be updating uh, my my layout to accommodate for that so that's pretty cool you can use five pin you can use four pin basically all you need is uh two or three pins and you'll be uh you'll have the same sort of feature which is literally just at killing the reverb or turning the reverb on i don't know i mean basically it's going to be doing this switch just with a foot pedal I don't see that being too attractive for many people, but if you're really crafty, you can do kind of what uh, others have done and on the other side of the foot switch have the FET 
sort of it's switchable via a relay. You can easily install a relay over here. There's enough room or up here in the preamp section. Um, you know, you can get crafty. I'm not going to do that, but you could if you wanted to. I know I never use the fat and more or less it's just a Keeley Katana. So if you have a Keeley Katana on your board already. Oh, final hint before I go. Uh, there is in my GitHub a PDF that you can use Adobe Acrobat Reader to print out a one-for-one -one copy of the circuit board. And that's what I use to basically do my runs underneath and to verify. Uh, you can use a marker. I highly recommend using a marker. Um, and then also there's a printout. You could actually go for one-for-one -one if you want. Uh, the boards don't exactly line up one-for-one -one in the placement of the chassis. I should have done that, but uh, it's way too much for me to change at this point. And here's some insight into things that I need based on what I've built and what I've ordered already. So I'm going to change up the uh, bias a little bit so it's exactly the way it was in the original. Uh, I started to get a little bit crafty with my bias, but I want to change that and go with the original before I started getting crafty and thinking that I know what I'm doing in that area. So I started to copy basically the mayor, but thought that it would work in this circuit, but I don't know if it will. Basically, the only thing you have to change is the capacitor, this resistor, and this resistor. Otherwise, that's what I got going on. This is a really good tip um, in sort of by design Everything was one-to-one, -one, so it makes for an easy layout. So check that out. Pretty cool, right? I think.